one two one two one two my name is bernard sweeney i'm an irish traveler and i'm based here in sligo the northwest on the republic of ireland i come from a community that is recognized as an ethnic minority within irish society and all of these things i'm going to go into if you're interested in hearing them but it'll give you maybe some idea of who i am and where i'm coming from so this ethnic minority irish travelers that conjures up a lot of negative images um, and we've seen this throughout social media through the media through politics through, even through religion um, all of that has its purpose it has a beginning i guess and when you're looking at it from the traveler mentality outward you see it much different than you would if you were looking at it from a settled mentality what they believe is inwards in other words you're looking at something within but that is also from when um, out that they're outsiders this might sound a bit off-putting for people but um I don't know how it's going to sound for people. I couldn't give a shit either. <laughs> um, but this is going to be kind of a freestyle talking. I need to get into this. I need to do this a bit more. Um, there's nothing that I feel that I can gain from it personally. Only persecution. <laughs> well, we come from a, a long line of uh, persecuted people. So we're used to it. So let me put it in more context if I can. Irish travellers are recognised as a ethnic minority within Irish society, within the Republic of Ireland. And are recognised through Northern Ireland and Great Britain. Or United Kingdom, whichever it prefers to call itself. Um, as an ethnic minority. People with a distinct, different culture and traditions and ways of being. That is different from the dominant uh, culture. So this is what they call an ethnic minority. If we were looking for another example for ethnic minority and indigenous minority, which are two interesting labels. So if we were to go to America, you would see that the Native Americans would be an indigenous minority. Maybe even indigenous, it has to do with the cultural mindset and ways of being and so on and so forth. So they are indigenous to that land. Now, if we see that uh, our Native Americans, African Americans, who, who people, that were taken from another land, from their homeland, from their motherland, from their societies, from their communities, from their family, from their children, were taken against their will and brought to America. These people are classed as an ethnic minority because they're not indigenous to that land, but of course are indigenous to another land. So that'll be the difference between ethnic and indigenous, in my opinion, what I see from where I'm coming from on the outside. So Irish travellers are seen as an ethnic minority. In other words, we are a people not from the land or do not have land or we came from somewhere else. Now this is the state, the Irish state, the settled state as we call it. This is the label they've placed upon our people. We are saying that this could not be correct because yes we are an ethnic minority we do have a culture dis distinctively different from that of the settled population of Ireland but we are indigenous people because our ancestors go back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and even in many cases thousands of years on the same island so that would make us indigenous. So when they say we came from within settled society, we're not quite sure what that means exactly. We know they have perceived it, that as travellers are backwards, uneducated, unintelligent, that they had failed to be good settled people. We couldn't make it. We couldn't make the cut. Wasn't good enough. This is what they would have been telling us for decades. Biggest majority we knew was bullshit. <laughs> you know, we, we knew our people, we knew our culture, we knew our identity. Of course, it gets eroded and broken down after a while. Well, we go into that. But um, yeah, we were pretty certain that we knew who we were. But unfortunately, we had um, these people telling us who we were and who we weren't. 
and even one stage telling us go back to our own country. So what is the difference in between travellers and Irish settled people, if people are looking in? If people are looking at Ireland, can they visualise a little green island, the size of a football pitch in the ocean? <laughs> if you can visualise that pure green, well, that pure green is what we call now the traveller culture, the traveller mentality, the traveller traditions and the ways and the acts and all that that goes into being culturally, distinctively different from the majority. Because the majority culture wasn't always the majority culture. And what they're calling an ethnic minority wasn't always an ethnic minority. We were once the majority mentality of this island and indeed many other places. And we've had many, many labels over the decades. They call us Irish travellers now. Before that it was tinkers, itinerants, hedge people, woods people, wanderers, bogs people. <laughs> They have called us many labels over the decades and centuries and even thousands of years because they also called us the Gales. Interesting. It's interesting because when you're in that mentality and you come from that world and you're here now in the moment talking into this microphone knowing that your father is your great chieftain knowing that your granduncle, rest his soul, was your great king. <laughs> And many queens and uh, warriors and fighters and traditions. All that was very normal in my life growing up. So yeah, from then to now, you're talking to the same people. Science, which imagine it took us this long to get to this point where we have to use science to identify ourselves and reveal ourselves. <laughs> But in the science world, in the settled uh, dome, in the settled mentality, there are scientists. Because there's a lot of good in there, of course. And we go in there in a few minutes. But before we go in, let's just have a talk here first. In the settled dome, in the settled mentality, do you have scientists, educated, smart, intelligent people? It doesn't always work that way, but in most parts it seems they want to work that way. So they carried out these DNA kind of uh, testing telling people where they came from. Interesting, when they did the one on Irish travellers, they kind of warped it in a way that it was going to be perceived much differently than it was in actual fact. Scientific, scientific facts, historical facts. Enough facts to fill the room. Um, they were projecting it that travellers, again, were an ethnic minority within Irish society. In other words, within means we were broken away from them, that we had become like a, a subculture and the functional people that just couldn't cut it. And we were the leftovers, degraded Irish. This kind of attitude that was developing. And this is one they've been always using uh, against travellers. But the scientists anyway have done this genetic testing and they found that travellers go back hundreds and even thousands of years and without a doubt they come from the island of Ireland. And also that there was a divergence. In other words, there was a genetic cutoff point. Now keep this in mind when we talk about genetics. Every human, every human being on the planet is genetically related to one another. When you go right back to the days of Africa and times of Africa, before it was even called Africa, one historical mother. Not sure about the father, was he absent? <laughs> It might explain a lot. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, we're here now. But we're all genetically connected. Everything else is just concepts and labels and words from a language. But again, before we go into any of that, back out. So, yeah, all these labels and identities and where we're at now as Irish travellers. We came from that old culture, that identity, them various, I suppose, variations and mentalities. In other words, we don't always keep the same language. We don't always keep in the same environment because environments change. Um, everything changes. Culture changes. But there's an identity uh, marker. So when we talk about uh, the divergence, uh, we're talking about a people that were once invaded. And because they came from the royalty of that society, which is completely different kind of royalty than the English or the rest of Europe. Again, we can get to all of that again. But yeah, just to say that we were not part of the European uh, project, 
colonized yes but our cultures language traditions and all that from our ancestors time was far much different in opposite in many ways we would have seen their ways i guess a little bit backwards and also keep in mind this is ireland the land of the saints and the scholars so you're talking about an educated intelligent people going back thousands of years anyhow much self-praise and gone in there <laughs> it's not to glorify it or, or to uh, kind of not glorify what would you call it romanticize us but then again we will why wouldn't we it's worth romanticizing but anyhow the scientists had found this this divergence and this divergence went back about roughly starting at least 360 years ago so something happened the traveler community that was once much bigger than it is now was becoming more and more reduced and isolated and cut off so they could come up with the perception well that means people just fell off and became more isolated but when you look at the divergence it goes back 360 years which is around the same time when the english had invaded ireland now they had invaded ireland earlier than that and they had established dublin as a home away from home an english colony has been and continues to be with all respects from the outside of course um so yeah this mentality had been developing and it had come from somewhere else and we have irish travelers and we have what now they call the settled uh, irish so the scientists could tell us about this divergence that happened scientifically so the history tells it that, yes that matches the same divergence um, part of the conquest of Ireland it was the Elizabethan conquest and the invaded Ireland this is not a history lesson um, I'm not an historian this is outside the colony this is me telling you what once happened and what is still happening and to explain where we're coming from so part of the Elizabethan conquest um, goes back to this mentality to shaping and creating and in many ways it was the home of conspiracy theories it was the origins in many ways of conspiracy theories when the english were carrying out their conquest and the conquest wasn't just about invading and taking the land this was a completely different project this time it was about shifting and changing the human mentality of the irish people it was to banish their language and their cultures and their traditions and make them feel guilty and inferior and backwards and this words and that words and all of every other direction um they were imposing so the conspiracy theory came into play when it became political to the royals when it became profitable for the companies when it became beneficiary for the religious orders so they conspired uh, to create this channel and tunnel of forcing people into thinking you might sound that's a bit crazy and everybody has their own mind but when that mentality was being created it was eroding, it was changing the landscape, the environment, setting up institutions and schools. It was putting various laws and acts in place against people's indigenous mentality and traditions and culture. Of course, now they will tell you we're a complex, evolved a culture. <laughs> evolution. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure do you understand what evolution is. But anyhow, this is what we tell ourselves to believe that, you know, what can we do about it now? It's all happened once upon a time. But I'm here again speaking into this microphone uh, because it's still happening, because it has never changed. So we have this Irish travellers and the Irish settled. And again, um, the divergence scientifically, historically. So you can see where the cultures, because prior to that, you're talking about a very indistinguishable uh, group of people part of a celtic culture a society with many variations of people who might look like they don't have a home <laughs> but were very much part of the society because back then the people didn't um they didn't say put to one place so if you had horses and you had wagons you were seen as a rich person a well-to-do person and then you'd have the castles and uh, the land. So the moving and all oh, this was part of the society. So you might get people who were roaming with tents and wicker homes. It, wasn't mean, it didn't mean they were homeless or didn't have homes. It was part of that society. 
And people might say that was an awful way to live. It was just a different way to live. And one that would have evolved, if not so many invasions. Because remember, everything that was good about our culture is being used today and around the world. So if it was that bad, trust me, they wouldn't be using it. But this is who we are and where we came from. I think it's the same way when we see... Um, yeah, we'll go into that again. I was going to talk about the, the, the arts and how to settle people. and But that goes into the institutions again and goes back into the mentality and the formation of the conquest and the ideas and the conspiracy that went on you know, to create this project. And people might think, again, that's a bit far back, a bit long gone and the people are dead. Absolutely. But since then, since the foundation of the Elizabeth, Elizabethan conquest, take example, back to Dublin, the English colony, Trinity College would have been f- founded by Henry VIII, who had become a newfound Protestant, a protester. Perfectly fine, nothing against that. So they were using the institutions to change the mentality and the, the framework of how things, how people think. So since then, it was Lil's Beaton, the daughter, um, who carried out the rest of that conquest and then went on to fund Trinity College and other Queen's Colleges to do the exact same thing as the father had planned and those had a conspire to shift the mentality of the Irish people into an English thinking one. Bizarre project. So that went on. And that was the real conquest. So now when you look around, we see, say, we're speaking the English language, we're here now. But you're really not the language when you really, truly think about it. Because the language is not from here. So when I say that, I suppose, I'm outside this colonial mentality in this podcast. It's said that we didn't come from that mentality. In actual fact, the vast majority of people speaking that language don't come from that particular mentality. It's a very unique mentality. Um, It has a very unique creation, I think. Its origins may vary in terms of the language, but if you listen to linguistics experts, they'll tell you no language was ever the same. You know, it's a completely different language. This is trying to give an idea of outside the mentality. Um... That there is another world that exists within this one. And most people come from it. Because when you talk about reality, when you talk about the settled mentality, it is one that has been embedded through the English conquest. And they've been perched here in Dublin for the best part of... At least really kicked in 500 years ago, but they started about 1,000 years ago. It's not to take anything away from these people's identities. But these institutions have been used constantly. And in 1922, when the Irish people believed they were fighting for independence and freedom, and most part, the war, you know, you take James Conley and um, the, I think it was the Irish League, and basically they were trying to revive old cultural ways, which are our culture, traveller culture, tinker culture, itinerant culture, Gale culture, same culture, same people, no matter which way people want to try to now divide it. We have more than enough to know who we are, um, scientifically, historically, and every other way. But it's not again in competition. It's about you guys think you've got you've moved on and you've left us behind or something, and we're trying to play catch up, or we're kind of broken people. We're badly smashed up people. We've had five hundred years of bombardment. Many of your ancestors had it also, but like everything else, this con- or this uh, conquest was a very carefully planned um, strategy. It wasn't an overnight project. It was to sh- uh, shift the mentality, shame people, and then change that mentality into an English one. So when you came with the 1916 where they were trying to revive some of the Irish ways because they felt it was fundamentally important to counter the colonial mentality, the full-on systematic English mentality. No offence to English people. I'm sure they'd understand this at a later date. But... Um, yeah, so it became a very institutionalised language. And then it broke into kind of different variations. Like you had the public school for the masses, the lottery ticket, if you do well, good and well. Then you had the universities and the college, and they were kind of geared towards uh, the middle classes. And then you had the private elitist schools for the, the riches of the richest. So that in itself is kind of a rigged education system. The people at the top are going to constantly uh, be doing well. People in the middle will do and constantly doing what they're told if they want to get to the top. And the people at the bottom will continuously to be labelled and cut off in divisions and so on and so forth. So it leaves nothing more to conflict. All of this might sound bonkers for a lot of people inside that mentality particularly. 
But if you're an outsider, you can see it as a kind of an objective way and subjectify it that way. It isn't that I live a world out here completely alienated from the settled world. I'm sharing the same language. I'm in the same environment. But I'm consciously aware now more than I ever had been. And not that I needed much more awareness, but the knowledge and the education part that came at much later in my life um, had been more, more, yeah, most valuable in understanding this at this kind of level. It'll take a lot more time and practice for me to get there, I think, to understand it more. But as it stands, um, the colonial project never ended. People have um, been colonizing themselves for the best part of a few centuries, I'd imagine. You know, these institutions and education. But the difference is that they're being ran by people who were educated and institutionalized by these systems and the institutions to do exactly what the system wants them to do. So if the conspiracy was about 500 years ago, the shift in mentality, indigenous language become a second language to the English language, the English mentality, way of thinking, feeling, being. Get caught up with linguistics and biologists and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not there. <laughs> I'm out here and I'm, I'm analysing it uh, from this perspective. And if people are wondering, what the fuck am I doing any of this for? Like I said, we come from the Irish traveller community, an ancient old culture and this is how we see the world it took us a while to get the use of these words because remember we've been cut off for centuries we were hung we were shot we were punished we would be rewarded if we were to go with them <laughs> we're put into ships transported famines conflicts wars you name it all this stuff is irish history that's our history they are our feelings they are our people that's our culture and when you look at the settled population, and again, when I say settled, again, this is the, where it gets kind of, um, the settled is a colonial project. If you think of it like a, a program, uh, an indoctrination called education, but it's really a program because even linguistic experts will tell you that any language that has to be taught in an institution, it's something that's been conjured up. We're using the language, but it's about taking ownership of the language, kind of saying, I can take a step back from this. So when you do it like that, I know it sounds crazy, but when you do it like that and follow the English language in the same way you would investigate something or look into something or deal with trauma or any of these things, just look at the language itself. A history of afflicting trauma onto people. And why is this all important to Irish travellers? Well, because our community are suffering and dying as a result of these same colonial systems that has never changed. And the fact that nobody's even aware they haven't changed. Subconsciously peddling the same systems. People might think that as a kind of a morbid negative view and there's a lot of good and a lot of positives in the settled speaking world and the environment and the world around us. And there's abundance of it. But if people do not know the systems they're operating and how they were designed and how they were put together and what was their purpose, belief, politics and a company, that is what that language became, all in one. And it's kind of like we see the Western world, its origins in terms of the language, the colonial language. Because again, the colonial language, the one I speak of, the English one, was also conjured up of various other countries. There were colonial powers, and they were the royals leading countries in the same way as CEOs run companies. And we don't come from that mentality. So I see that, but not criticizing it. Again, we're submerged in it. <laughs> So I think there's a lot of room we can change it, improve it. I mean, look at the history. You can see it around the world. Now, if it's not Ireland with Irish travellers, it goes back eight, 900 years of extreme persecutions. Um, you can take it from anywhere else in the world. Uh, Palestine, India, China, Japan, New Zealand, Canada, and various other places. All of that is connected and related to our people. One way or another historically and genetically, as all humans are. So this is some of the rants that I'll be going into and trying to get uncover in my own understandings and trying to make sense of the world through Outside the Colony podcasts. I'll keep doing this, not because I'm trying to win you over or convince you otherwise. I'm doing this because we can save our people. Our people have some of the worst statistics on the planet where we didn't have them only a few decades ago. We've got some of the worst psychological issues. Suicide rates are higher 
than Ireland. And Ireland has 18.5 higher percent um, depression rate than the rest of Europe. So you can see from my perspective how psychological all of this is. The labels, the identities, institutions and systems and platforms and state heads and label after label after label. It's pretty all much, uh, pretty much systematic. And its origin before it came, when it arrived in Ireland, it was about breaking down the culture, the society, because society countered their one. They didn't like it. Uh, you know, there was no rights over land or water. Everyone had a right to live. There was better health care back then. So you're talking about the people that were well advanced, no matter what the English or any, or even the Irish settled, now would have people believe. Completely different world and very greatly misunderstood from a colonial perspective. But when it was breaking that down, what it was doing, it was crushing societies. Ours was one of the first overseas countries to be attacked with this colonial mentality. So it destroys the societies. Within that, it creates um, groups. It divides and creates groups. And then it shapes communities out of them. And then within that, it shapes individuals out of these people. It become so systematic from such a young age, from the classroom to the next classroom, discipline, told what, to to told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, get in line, stay in line, put your hand up, put your hand down. All of these disciplines, and many, many, many more, where they believe that they are well-educated. They are highly disciplined people. It doesn't mean they're highly intelligent people. And again, if we look around the world, all the places I just mentioned, all of them are part of one single event, whether people accept that or not. So your colonization, your imperialism, your capitalism, your neo this and your post that, all of them are one event. You can put markers, times and dates in there for your own conveniences. That's all it is, a human convenience. Because outside the colony, we see it from the beginning, you may not like um, its endings. With that, take care and I hope to talk again soon. Bye bye.